How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. Spring's coming. Now, every winter we leave our weed whackers set. We don't start them up. And for some reason they don't start. So today, I'm going to be working on this Echo Weed Whacker. This is a friend of mine. Um, he don't know what's wrong with it. He keeps pulling the string. It won't start. And actually, I was sitting there pulling the string and I couldn't get it started either. So... I did get it to prime up some fuel in there, but I couldn't get it to start. Well, as you can see, we're not going to pull all day. It's not going to start. So, there's three things we need to start uh, any type of weed whacker or anything like that. Three main things you need. You need spark. You need fuel and you need compression. If you have them three things, this thing should start. So we're lacking one of them three things. So we're gonna get on this thing and we're gonna start looking it over and see if we can find out what might be wrong with it. Okay, anytime you're uh, trying to start your weed whacker and it will not start, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that the switch is on the in on position. And I know that sounds silly, but there's been times I pulled a weed whacker and it was on the off position. So make sure it's on the on position. And then you want to look inside your fuel tank, open your tank up, and make sure there's fuel in it. This one has fuel in it, and I know it has fuel because it's pumping up in the primer. And what I mean by pumping up in the primer, on the back side of your weed whacker, most of them have a little primer. It's a little primer ball. And if you take this and you push it a few times, and you'll see that gas comes up in there. That's your primer. And you want it on cold start. And that's what we did. And we still have no, no, it doesn't seem like this thing wants to start at all. So let me try it again. We're on cold start, on position, got fuel in the primer. Try it again. Okay, so it's not going to start. Shouldn't have to pull it more than a couple few times. It should fire up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if I have spark. Let me show you how to do that. Alright, to find your spark, you're going to look for this thing right here. And this is your spark plug cap. It's right on the top of the motor. It may be on a chainsaw. It could be in the back. It could be different places. But on this weed blacker, it's right on the top. It has a wire going to it. We're just going to pull it off, take the spark plug wire off, and get you a wrench. Make sure it fits decent and break your spark plug loose. Now you should be able to twist it out by hand. Now, just by taking a look at the plug, it don't look that bad, but I still don't think it has spark for some reason. Now if we ground this out on a piece of metal here, somewhere on a piece of metal, we should be able to see this thing spark. I don't know if I can get you in a position or not, we'll see here. I'm trying to get it to where Yuns could see it too. Okay, I'm trying to lay that against the back of the motor right there. I'm just going to pull it and look down in there and see if I can see any spark. I'm trying to see if there's spark between this, these two little pieces. You got an element there, and you got this little thing that grounds it out right there on the tip. And if we could see some spark on there, and I don't see any spark on there at all. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper. And I'm going to clean this tip up a little bit. I'll show you how we do it. We'll sand the outside of this, and then we'll sand between this just a little bit. All right, we got this spark plug. Got this little bit of sandpaper. We're just going to scuff the top of this a little bit till it's shiny. We want it to be pretty shiny. 
you see bare metal, should be okay. Then just fold your paper in half, take it inside here and scuff it around inside there a little bit. Now we do know that this thing, I just blew it off a little bit. We know this thing's going to need a new spark plug, but we don't have one right now. We're going to see if we can get it to spark on this one so we can at least ways get it fired up. So this is definitely one thing we want on the list for this uh, weed whacker is a spark plug. Okay, I laid a little socket in there on the side just so we could see if you guys could see if that thing has spark. Now I see no spark, no spark yet. So we know this is definitely our problem. We have no spark. So what I'm gonna do is, I have lots of weed whackers and chainsaws here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of mine out and stay, see if mine sparks in there. And if mine sparks, we know he has to get a spark plug. Okay, all right, I got a spark plug out of my blower. And I know this spark plug's good. So I'm just going to set it down in there. We're going to see if we got spark yet. No spark yet. So it might not be the spark plug. Now I just laid that spark plug down, or this little socket down in there, so it would ground out against the motor so I could let you guys see if it had spark. There's absolutely no spark. So now what do we do? Well... We got to check out the wire coming back here. I just wonder if the wire coming back into the motor from the shutoff, could it be grounded out and not making it run? That's all a possibility. So let's dig a little bit deeper and see if we can find something else that might be wrong with it. All right. I know his spark plug's good because I stuck it in my blower over there and it fired up. So we know the spark plug's good. So we're going to go ahead and put it back on. Now we're going to get up here and we're going to find the wire that goes to this switch and see if it is shorted out somewhere. I know it's got to be grounded to the motor somewhere. And we could bypass that by unhooking the switch from the motor. So we're going to get inside here and see if we can find out where this switch is hooked up and unhook it. Okay, I'm going to try to take, matter of fact, I'm going to unhook this spark plug wire. And I'm going to take this top cover off so we can see down inside this thing. I really never worked on the, this particular Echo Weed Blacker before. But it can't be any different than any other one. So we're just going to pull this top off. And see if we can look down in here and see a little bit more than what we're seeing now. Hopefully. This guy should snap off of here. Got some wires right there. Okay. Now, this is the wire. This is going from your coil down. This is where this is coming from this coil. So, this would be the one that I'd want to unplug. This one right here. Now, the only thing is if we unplug that one. We're not going to be able to shut it off unless we short it out. And we can short it out right here against the motor. So instead of me doing that, let me pull this spark plug out. We'll be able to see if it got any spark just by pulling the string now. I see absolutely no spark at all in this guy. So now we got to go to our magneto, which is down in here, and our coil. If we don't have any spark here, probably either our coil is bad or our magneto needs cleaned. So we got some digging to do. So we're going to go ahead and start tearing this thing apart get down in there. I just hope he wants to put the money into it to fix it. I don't know. A coil might be around 50, 60 bucks. I don't know what he's going to pay for a new weed whacker. But we definitely do not have any spark. So and with that wire off, 
This unhooks that switch up there. This is what would ground out and shut that motor off. I'm going to go ahead and put the plug in. Make sure it's tight. I'm going to try to start it one more time. Let's see what happens here. No spark. Now what we can do, just to be sure, See, the spark plug is wet, so we know it's not getting any fire. If that spark plug was dry, I'd say it might be sparking, but if the spark plug tip is wet, it's not getting fire. So the only thing I got left is I can clean the uh, magneto and put the coil, clean the coil, and that's about it. And if he wants to do any more, he's going to have to replace his coil probably. So... I don't think I have one, but I'll look and see what we got. All right, to get down to this thing a little bit further, we're gonna have to take these four bolts here. There's four bolts on this. We wanna take these guys out. This is what holds this big cone on. We wanna get rid of this cone. We wanna pull that cone off of there so we can get down to that magneto in there and the coil. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these bolts out. As soon as I get these, there's one here. There's one inside there. Maybe three or four. But they're holding that whole cone on. So we're going to get these out real quick. Alright, as you can see, we took the four bolts off of here and there was two under the gas tank and one on this side. So there was a total of seven bolts actually hold this thing on. And they all had Loctite on them. So we want to make sure we put Loctite back on them when we put them back on. Uh, we're down to the magneto. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a gap and a gap on this thing between the coil and this uh, magneto. We're going to get a gap on that and then we're going to pull the coil off and we're going to clean the coil and clean the magneto and put it back together and see if we have spark then. So hopefully we'll have spark. If not, the only thing it could be is this coil. Okay, we got us a filler's gauge. This is a filler's gauge. It's got different thicknesses of uh, metal on it. And it's just to gauge how open a space is. And this one here is ten thousandths. What I want to do is bring the metal of this up here. And I want to stick it in there until it's snug. It don't have to be real tight. It just has to be snug. I want it to go through those two pieces there. So now I know when I put it back together... I want to make sure it's ten thousandths of an inch away from that magneto to this coil. So now I can go ahead and take the coil off. We'll go ahead. We'll give us a uh, a wrench here, and we'll go ahead and break these guys loose, and we'll be able to take this coil out. Now I want to tell you guys something. If you're going to be doing this yourself. You want to make sure you remember where all these bolts go to now. There's a lot of different size, different threads. Uh, just keep track of them and put them in their place and you'll know where they go. And if you're doing a video, maybe, of course it would be kind of hard. We can see these screws are black, so we know where they go. Definitely go on the coil. The top cover has one that goes into plastic and one that goes into metal. Of course, I put them with the top cover. So... Let's get this guy out and see what it looks like. Now, this is a... Uh, that's a magneto, so it's actually magnetic. So the coil will actually stick to it. Unless we turn it to where the plastic is. Flywheel is actually plastic. I've never seen too many plastic ones, but... Today, you don't know what they're going to make. So here's our coil. It's a little dirty. It's not too bad. We'll take a little bit of sandpaper and we'll clean these up a little bit. Just so they're getting down to some good, I want to get them good contact. So we'll clean these up. We're just taking our finger and rubbing over a little bit. That looks a lot better already. 
I'm gonna say this coil might be bad. I, I'm gonna say. I mean, it don't look awful. Oh, dirty. So I'm gonna say it's probably bad. But we're gonna see. That's what we're doing here. We're working on it to see if the coil is okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing, a little bit of sandpaper on this guy right here. Zoom me in a little bit. This is your magneto. You can see there's some rust on there, a little bit of rust and debris. We're gonna just take some sandpaper, run over top of it just like we did on our coil. Make sure it gets good contact. Now I'm going to tell you guys, I'm not no mechanic. Now, I never went to school for this stuff. I'm just doing it. This is the way I've been doing it for years. And it's worked for me. It should work for you. So now, let's see if there's another set of these magnets, which there isn't. So we're going to go ahead and put our magneto, or our coil, back on here. We're decently clean. I'll get a rag and wipe these off. Just... Just a nice clean rag. I got a little oil on my fingers. I don't know if that'll hurt, but we'll take a little rag and wipe them off. Then we'll get it set back in there. All right, we got everything wiped off real good. Now we're going to go ahead and set this guy back on here the way it was. And then I'm uh, going to go ahead and hook it back up. Get our screws put back in here. And then we're going to, once I get these screws in here, we're going to Take our little fillers gauge and set them at ten thousandths of an inch. That's what they were. Now if you turn your motor to where the magnet doesn't pull on that coil, sometimes that'll help you a little bit. Now I just turned my motor over where the motor's sitting straight up and down so I could spin this on its own. Now I have your, this is the magnetic part, and this is your coil, and I just, you can take your uh, little gauge and make sure that it fits right in there, nice and snug like the other one was. It wasn't too hard, it was just perfect, and as long as that goes through there, you can give this guy a nice tighten, tighten it up, and after you tighten it, recheck it again, make sure it's okay, make sure your gauge goes through, and it does. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and get this all put back together and see if it'll fire. That's all we got. All right, we got it back together. Got our spark plug in there. Now here's the big chance. Let's see. Big test right here. And nothing. Not a spark one on that thing. Just to make sure, I'm going to change out the spark plug. And I'm going to put a solid one on there. And we should be able to see that jump from this. It should jump from here down to there. And there's nothing. This coil is bad. That's how you test a coil. Now, if you guys were to do this, actually, let me make sure I got my camera focused here. Let's see here. You don't have to take this whole thing off to clean that magneto. I never worked on one of these before. It's the first time I pulled it off. No big deal for me. But you could actually put your fillers gauge up in this corner. You can see the magneto. And you can check your gap. Pull your two bolts off. And then put your fillers gauge back in there. And tighten this back up. You didn't have to take all this off. I just wanted to let you know that. But the easy way to find out if that wire, if your switch is shorted off, uh, shorted out, is to pull this out off. You should have spark. If you don't have spark, you can pull these two bolts here out, sand them two pieces up, clean them up a little bit, wipe them off, put it back in and see if you got spark again. And if you don't on the spark plug, put you a straight rod in there, ground it off the motor. And if it still don't have spark, that coil is bad. 
I'm 100% for sure this coil is bad on this machine. So I'm going to call him and see if he wants to pick one up. I'll see what he says. Well, guess what? We got all the parts. I gave him a call. He said he'd pick them up. Been a couple days. We got the parts. Now we're going to go ahead and put this thing together and it should fire right up. Let's get started on this. All right, now that we know what we're doing, this shouldn't take but a few minutes to change this coil out. We're going to throw a new spark plug in it, new spark plug wire and cap, new fuel filter, and a new air filter. This thing should fire right up. Now, you know how hard it was. I tried a few times to get this thing started, but couldn't get it started. Checked that coil a million times. We just want to make sure we get this guy fired up and get it running for him. Now the spark plugs, when you get them for these things, most of the time they're preset. I don't know what the gap would be on this thing. I could always call the dealer and ask them, but normally they have this piece on here to protect that cap so it doesn't or so it doesn't come off set. So normally they're preset. So now we got us a new spark plug. We're just going to go ahead and screw it in there and get it snugged up. We know that thing is out of the way. You don't want to over tighten your spark plug. Just tighten it, snug it up. You don't have to over tighten them. We're going to pull the wire off the coil, just like we did before. Take the two bolts out in the front. Twist them out of here. Pull our coil off. There's our old coil. Then I get our new coil out of the bag. I'm going to go get a gauge, a filler's gauge. We know it's ten thousandths of an inch from that magneto. And we're going to go ahead and get this guy set back down on there. This should be a pretty easy one. We'll make sure everything looks the same on these guys. Match them up, make sure everything looks okay. And everything does. So we got a good coil here. So I'm going to go ahead and get a filler's gauge, start our shoot screws here. See how easy that was? As long as it starts. You know, this coil did cost him about 50 bucks, so that's a $50 part right there we just put on. I'll get the gap, get the gap on this thing set, and we'll get her snugged up. Put her cap on there and see if she'll start. Okay, you can see what I did here is I took the fillers gauge, run it between the magneto and the coil, just make sure it slides back in and out pretty easily, and uh, we got it set. Now we're just going to plug our little wire back into the top of this coil. Then we all we got to do is put our little cap on here, and we're ready to pretty much start this thing up. Okay, when you get your cap, you get two pieces to it. You get a little spring type thing. This is what's going to set right on top of your spark plug. Just like that. It's going to snap on there. What you want to do is poke a little hole in your wire. And then take it, get it started down in there. Once you get it started, you can take a pair of pliers. That's all I did was take a pair of pliers and squish it down in there. Make sure it's good into the wire. Now what you got to do, which is going to be a tough one, you got to get this inside of here. So we're going to get a little dish liquid stick on there, and we're going to see if we can get it squished in there. Put a little dish liquid on it. Okay, I just put a little dab of dish liquid on there. We're going to see if we could get this guy to squish right down in there. It should work. It might be tight, but we're going to get her. One way or another, we'll get her in there. You keep fighting it, you'll get it through there. Oh. 
Just keep working at it till you see it come in through the top. Okay, we got it in there. You can see it down in there. All I got to do is stick it on here and get it straightened up. Okay, I think we got it straight in there. Oh yeah, good enough. That's going to work just fine. So now, this motor really should start. We got it down on there, I got it bent over. When you turn the cap, it's straight lined up in there. So, we're good on this. Now, he did pick me up a new air filter for this thing. That's the simplest thing in the world to do here. We're just going to unscrew this guy real quick like this. Pull the old air filter out, which looks like crap. Okay, we got our new air filter. We're just going to set it down in here. Just sets down in there nice and snug. Actually, you could take it and put it on this side if you want. Either way. I think I'd rather put it in here and then just slide it on screw it back in the only thing left we got to do to this guy is change the um, he got me a uh, fuel filter I'll show you how to do a fuel filter real quick okay only thing you need for the fuel filter is a small piece of wire a pair of needle nose pliers Round that thing just like that, like a little fishing hook. What we're going to do is pull the cap off. We're going to find our little hose in here. You'll see it. Pull your... There's your fill filter. Piece of cake. Pull it off. Put your new one on. Now we got a brand new fill filter on there. We want to make sure it stays on there good. New fuel filter, you want to lay it back down in there. Make sure it goes, it's not tangled up in there. Push it down with your wire so it goes clear to the other side of the tank. Tilt your machine up in the air, shake it a little bit, put your cap back on. Now, we're going to see if this guy will start now. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to put our coil or plug wire back up through here slip this down on now there's a couple wires on this one side here you want to make sure they get in their little slot they're to shut off wires then you got two bolts here one for plastic one for metal make sure they're in the right spot screw her back on once you find out the problem, it doesn't take long to fix anything. You just got to figure out the problem. Hopefully this guy will fire up and run. And there's a good chance that it may not fire up and run. But we fixed one of the problems that it had. The only other problem it may have would be fuel. Because we got compression. So, we're going to give this thing a shot and see if it will fire up. Make sure button is on prime your ball put your choke on cold start pull the machine now if any of you guys are out there wanting to do this and make money from it the best thing I can tell you to do is have them pick up your parts and then when you're done with it, give them the old parts back. Give them the garbage and all. You ain't got to throw it away. Tape it to the machine and give it back to them so they know you used all the parts that they had given you. That's a good way to be honest with somebody and make sure that, uh, you know, let them know they're not getting ripped off. Um, this thing sounds like the carburetor needs cleaned on it. What I might do is I might do a complete different video on just cleaning the carburetor because uh, this video is going to get a little too long anyhow. So... 
Maybe we'll pull the carburetor off and I'll open it up and show you guys what's inside the carburetor and show you how to clean it. Nowadays, we leave the weed whackers set all winter long. We don't start them up. You have a lot of ethanol inside your uh, gasoline now. And that ethanol will turn to a white chalky powder. And believe it or not, it gets inside your carburetor, gets in your filters and plugs them up. So maybe I can show you what you need to clean inside the carburetor and uh, be able to do that yourself too. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. Till next time.